Father Brown, why are we in your bathroom right now? Uh, great question. Okay, so um, I have this hobby. Um, every spring, um, morel mushrooms pop up around late April. Um, and I go mushroom hunting. And this past year, I started to experiment trying to um, get these mushrooms to grow down at my parents' house uh, down in Logan because they have a lot of woods and good areas for mushrooms. But it's not as easy as um, planting seeds. Um, there is a big contamination factor with uh, starting to grow more mushrooms that I'll explain to you in a second. But, so basically, I have two jars of grain right here. Um, rubbing alcohol and uh, my mushroom culture and so the way this works is fungus is not like growing plants or trees or flowers um, fungus is actually more like animals than it is like um, uh, plants and trees and whatnot because um, so the way mushrooms work is there is something called mycelium that's the way it, it grows so you have um spores mushroom spores which act like uh imagine like seeds for a, a tree and then the actual mushroom that you see popping up that is like the apple that is the fruit and so you have this whole underground network of mycelium that that just keeps growing and it feeds off of um, organic non-living material. So basically in these syringes, I have two types of culture. I have a um, yellow morel. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's that mycelium in there. And then I have a black morel. And ultimately they look like this, black morel, um, and then your yellow ones. And we're sure these aren't poisonous. <laughs> well, there is one type of, they call it a false morel, um, but those are easy to distinguish. Um, so basically in these jars, I have my organic non-living um, substance. And so what, ha what we're gonna do here is inoculate these jars with these syringes. And so what happens is, um, in about three or four weeks, I'm gonna need to take these and transfer it to another substrate, which is manure. All right, um, okay. Now, like I said, contamination is a big part of this. Um, this whole process could be a failure. Um, it just, it, it depends. Um, but once after I transfer it to that manure, then it ultimately it gets put into the ground and it begin, it's strong enough to live off of um, contaminated places. So we will take, I'll do the black one. So I'll take rubbing alcohol. And don't do this without parental supervision. One, because there's needles involved so you can get injured and two i don't think you want your parents finding discharged syringes in your trash can <laughs> it's not <laughs> a conversation you want to have all right uh, do this in here And that's why I have this air purifier pumping over here. I'm telling you, I watched this on YouTube last year and I thought they were crazy. And then I ended up with jars of mold and I was extremely upset. All right. Let's take this. shape up that, break up that mycelium. Okay. Then I'm going to take my jars. 
kind of wipe them down with at least this injection port. These injection ports close up once once you remove the needle from it. Safety first. Yep. And then give it one shake. And then we're good. So all I need to do, again, well, like plants, so plants have, what's that? Chlora, chlorophyll. So basically it takes, that chlorophyll enables plants to take light and convert it into energy. I think that's what it is. But fungus doesn't have chlorophyll. Um, therefore, I'm going to basically just take these jars, put them right under my sink and just let them sit there for three or four weeks. But that's my hobby. Um, hope you guys learned something and thank you, Mr. Gruber for helping. Thanks, Father.